Hey guys, we have a great show for you today. Uh, it's not the show we intended. Matt no. gets us started right away, and I went squirrel, and we went down that rabbit hole. <laughs> we for the went rest on of the a time. tangent. But that tangent is advocacy. That's the whole theme of the show. What does it mean to advocate for your kids? What does it mean to advocate with their faith formation, sacramental prep, and other things? What does it mean to advocate all the way up to Rome? So jump on in and enjoy the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Catholic Dad Show. My name's Chris. And I'm Matt. And we're just a couple of dads trying to just embrace the fullness of truth with Catholicism and the way that we live our life. Anybody else notice that dramatic, you know, eyeglass removal that Chris did? I mean, that just like set the stage for an epic episode. Best episode Boom. ever. It's coming your way. Hold on. I got two random things that I thought of um, that uh, before the show. One of them was, as I said, have you met, you know, or whatever, have you, whatever, um, before we started recording. It reminded me of a moment that I had with... Uh, my oldest son and his friends. So he was in town uh, this past week for uh, their Easter break. And they uh, and they were gonna go see uh, the Dungeon and Dragons movie. And I was like, I wanna see that, I'll go with you. You know, and so I, I, like, I basically just crashed their party. Um, and Trinity came with me, so um, there was me and Trinity and, and their friends. And then there were, you know, a couple of cute, you know, there, was, there was actually a single, like, cute girl at the end of our row that was about the age of my, my College son age. and his yeah. friends, Yep. you know, and, uh, and I, I forget exactly what I did, but I, I texted the entire group and I said, of the entire group of guys. And I said, Hey guys, it, it's, it's almost a crime for this cute girl to be sitting in this movie alone. And I just left it at that, you know? And then one of them said, Hey Norman, you know, and, uh, Norman's body lit, like anyway, but it was, so then anyway, so in the text thread, I, I did, someone needs to be his wingman, you know, and then like later on it was, have you met Norman? Anyway, it was, it was a funny moment for that group of friends that I haven't done. And I know that's one of those stories that's like funny to me, not to anybody else, but it's like having that kind of a relationship with your son, you know, or when your kids, when they get older, when you can joke with about stuff like that, it's just a lot of fun. So. So maybe that's a different episode altogether where we talk about how to play matchmaker with your kids. <laughs> like that, oh, th that seemed like you vetted you vetted that potential uh, spouse very well. She's by <laughs> herself, therefore she's eligible for you, son. Oh, uh, I forgot what the other thing was, but if it comes up, I'll interrupt the show and, okay. and share it. We're going to scoot way back. Today we're talking yeah. about how, uh, so a, a lot of kids are preparing for sacraments, whether it be First Communion or uh, recon First Reconciliation or Confirmation. Um, and so we're going to talk about how do we as dads journey with our kids through that sacramental process, um, because it is the church's job to form for sacraments. Um, just to clarify, it's also your job as a dad to form for sacraments, um, but it can't be like the Catholic school or it can't be like uh, a homeschool community or it can't be something like that. The church is the one that dispenses or makes available the sacrament. So so there is something about partnering with the parish to make this a reality. I guess that's what I'm saying. You can't just help me, say, help me we talk to that. Father. Yeah. Um. So you said that the church has to be the one that does the formation for the sacraments? Or are you saying the church has to be the one who actually dispenses the sacrament? It, it's so dispenses, but it's also on the church to make sure that the person is ready for the sacraments. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So discernment, you know, and um, I don't like dispensing. That sounds so, is that the correct term? Dis, maybe dispose, but it's not, <laughs> like I dispose I mean, in dirty diapers. You I mean, know? you don't like, like, I don't know when, uh, I don't know, like in, in marriage, we say we confer the sacrament on each other. So confer the sacrament. Is that right? I like that a lot better than, sounds a lot better than dispense. dispense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the, the, the sacrament needs to be, you know, needs to happen within, you know, a Catholic church or, you know, by. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that's that's not even true either because of the sacrament. So here's the, here's the deal. There. My but, daughter yeah. is receiving confirmation this spring and we will be on a trip during the time that our parish has the sacrament. Mm, so we yeah. had to get a letter from our pastor to be sent over to the parish that she'll be at where the bishop will be to, to have, have her sacrament of confirmation at a different parish. Correct. Thus, our pastor is the one still initiating the sacramental process by giving his authority or permission for one of his parishioners to receive the sacrament of confirmation at a different place. 
Is he given permission for that, or he's is he saying she's prepared for that? He he's acknowledging, but so the sacrament so record. I'm, I'm like, and I know this is kind of nitpicky, but I'm really curious because I don't know. Like, I'm curious if yeah. your pastor has to get permission, or if if the the pastor that you're having it done at just wants confirmation that you have been prepared. Sorry, yeah, I mean, you just use the word confirmation. I know, I know. He just wants to know that the the child has been the person has been prepared. So the pastor. They, the pastor at the other parish needs needs to know that because they're the ones confer or that that's the location because the bishop will confer the sacrament, right? Correct. Um, and, but but at that, that that it's very complicated. Now that we're but going I, ahead and picking it up, but I am I am serious. I'm like, is it permission? Like, does does her pastor have to give another pastor permission? You know, for it to happen there. I don't think that's true. The the duty uh, and the rights goes to the pastor. Like it. It is not okay for you to drive back to your grandparents' house in a different state and be like, well, you're 15, so let's just get you the sacrament of confirmation. Unless you're a parishioner there as well, which again is another whole conversation, <laughs> um, that, that it's the pastor, the person's pastor. This is kind of one of the cool things about a parish being a plot of land. Like a yeah. parish is a, an area, and the person who is the priest in the, or the pastor in that area has responsibility for the souls within that area. And so if you're going to send your soul into someone else's territory, you got to give them a heads up, which is the same reason why <laughs> priests from another diocese coming into your diocese need permission from the bishop of said diocese to have um, to be able to publicly celebrate sacraments. <laughs> the whole idea of when you take your soul into another diocese, you need to let that person know. It's like every time I go into a new parish boundary, I need to, hey, pastor, I'm in your area. You're responsible for me now. Oh, wait, no, you're not responsible for me. My pastor back home is. But just so you know, I'm here in your area. <laughs> I anyway, love- I just thought that was that just visual of that is hilarious. But But when <laughs> it comes to sacramental life, I think that's an important thing. We had a situation when I worked at a diocese where we had to go back and fix a lot because someone came up from Mexico and claimed to be a bishop and you could get the sacraments for your kids for just $15 a pop. Wow. It had to be in cash. And we had to track all these things down because those sacraments were illicit. Were not valid. Yes, yes. correct. Yeah. And so there is something about that. And that's why there's sacramental records. And, and so there's this whole process to the sacramental life because you can only receive certain sacraments once. Right. Yeah, I was just I was just curious about the whole permission thing, you know, because I don't I don't know I still don't know like if uh, yeah it's, that's interesting, you know, because it, is it was it the same bishop? Yes, it will be the same bishop. If it, if it would be the same bishop, then it's I don't it's it, it seems like it would be more of just letting them know that they are prepared, not necessarily permission, you know. And so we like as speakers, like when we go and speak in another diocese, we're not getting permission from our pastor to speak. Or permission from our diocese to speak, we're getting a letter uh, that that pr- it's like a that we're bona fide speakers that we're like actual Catholics in the area. That they were, were in good standing. In good standing, like a so we have standing. a letter of that, you know, that we yeah. we take, and so it seems like that's what you needed in this case. And it's probably nitpicky, like little stuff, but stuff like that I think matters. And I didn't want anyone watching to get hung up on the permission thing because I, I, I and I again I could be wrong. It, so just so, wanted to put it out there. He, here's the deal. You don't have to live in the parish boundary to be a parishioner. So if you are finding yourself hungry at the parish that you're currently at and they're not meeting your needs and you've advocated, right? First advocate, talk to the pastor and say, hey, you know how every time my child makes a noise in mass, you guys all give me dirty looks. I don't feel welcome here. <laughs> um, can this change or should I look elsewhere for my uh, my Catholic needs to be met? And then if that doesn't work and you try and be a part of the solution, then go go where you're fed. Go where you're fed at the nearby parish or whatever, and become a registered parishioner there, right? But the the, the way the reason why I have this information in my head is I used to be the diocesan director, and we had a situation where uh, there was a Catholic high school that was doing sacramental prep, but it was a Catholic high school that was not attached to any parishes, and they uh. were doing sacramental prep for confirmation. Okay. And then and then the kids were just going back and saying, hey, I got prepared. And they had to go to canon law to determine that that was not OK because it's the pastor's responsibility. Uh, what's that? What's that millstone uh, quote that you like so much? <laughs> um, what is but, better uh, that a millstone, a millstone be tied around your neck and you'd be thrown into the sea than to lead one of these little ones astray? Right. So 
Who's whose millstone if one of those little ones gets led astray? Who does that yeah. millstone belong to? Yeah. It's not it's not the school principal, right? At yeah. an independent now at parish Catholic schools, you can do that because they're attached to the parish. But this yeah. was an independent Catholic school, right? And so uh there is the chief catechist of your parish is your pastor, which means that if your little ones get led astray, the millstone goes to him first before it goes to the person or the volunteer that's leading sacramental prep. Yeah. And that's a scary so thing. Pray for our the reason, priests. The reason I'm interested in this now, and I know this isn't necessarily the topic for the day, and we're spending a lot of time on this. Right. Um, Third of the way through the episode. The reason I'm interested in this is because there are organizations, you know, uh, in around the nation, like Vagabond is one of them, who does RCIA in their, um, as part of their program. Right. You know, they have their version of RCIA for the unchurched, um, bringing them into the church. And so is that done with permission from the pastor, like in that area? Like, I'm just, I'm curious about that. And maybe when I go visit them, I'll ask that question, but um, it's neither here nor there for this conversation, but it, it just comes up. I think what you just said about the school would apply here, but there's something different. But but let's dive into that. I think that that's an inter- interesting question. One of two things could be true. One, either when they present that to the pastor and they say, we've, we've gone through Vagavon Jesus class or whatever, mm-hmm. then the pastor recognizes, okay, they are well-formed. Yep. In the same way that if you at, are, are forming your children for sacraments at home and the pastor's like, okay, well, just come and let me ask your kid a couple of questions to make sure they're ready. Yep. That's great. And like you can absolutely sure. homeschool sacramental prep so long as the pastor or someone who represents the pastor is able to uh, validate that yep. they're prepared for the sacrament. Being prepared for the sacrament doesn't mean you have to jump through all the hoops the parish has. Sure. It means you have to yeah. be prepared for the sacrament. Yeah. That's it, you know. Yeah. So, um, the, the, so the students at that school could be prepared there, but it's just it's not just an automatic boom. We we get confirmed it, it, unless a, the pastor the, the has parish, delegated his authority to yeah, the, the, the parish. Still has the authority, or you know, to discern the you know the formation of those students. Yeah, it it can't happen unless the parish has. One hand in the cookie jar, you know. It it could be a thousand other things going on, but the the parish in some way has to be aware and a part and approve of that process. Yeah, I mean, it could happen independently without any, you know, pre approval from the parish. Um, but before confirmation would happen, the parish would have to approve it. Which is a very yeah. long intro <laughs> to this point. If you want your kids to get the sacrament at uh, at the Catholic Church. You can't just say, well, they're in second grade. Let's go get you first communion. You have to involve the parish in some way. And yeah. so make sure that you go and you talk to your parish about what what sacramental prep looks like at, at, your, uh, at your parish. And if you have some of your own ideas and things like that, is that something that can be done instead of the parish classes? Or is that something that is done in addition to the parish classes? Yeah. Um, but there's some permission to play things. First of all, uh, to receive any sacrament in the Catholic Church except for baptism your child must be bapti- a baptized Catholic. So First Holy Communion, Confirmation, First Reconciliation, make sure you have their baptismal certificate ready. The parish is going to ask for a copy of that to ensure that they are a baptized Catholic. You need to make sure that you're actually, like confirmation in the Catholic Church is confirming your faith in the Catholic Church to a large degree. And so in order to confirm something, you have to practice something. So make sure that you're going to mass on a regular basis, every Sunday, holy days, and things like that. Otherwise, like, what's the point, you know? And and that's something something that's a great question. What are reasons to get your kids sacraments if you're not practicing your faith yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, are there any? Can you think no, of any? I mean, I mean, I mean, the it's the same reason that, and, and this may this may not make a lot of sense, but the same reason that if I if I did if I if I never went to college, but I want my kid to go to college. You know, I want them to have a better life than I did. You know, um, I want them to have a better spirituality than I did. You right. know, maybe I've given up on my spirituality, you know, and I've you know, given up on God. You know, I'm in a bad place, but I know he's real. I know he exists and I want my kid to have that. You know, so there, I would think maybe, you know, but that wouldn't. Yeah, it, it, that's a, I would be, that would be a very, very rare case. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if your kid if your kid is going to play baseball, I never played baseball growing up. Right. Yeah. I, I would probably throw the ball in the front yard with them and help them practice that, even though you're never going to take the field. And so there is something about us practicing, but maybe you have an awesome godparent that lives nearby and they're coming by and picking them up every Sunday for mass. I think that that's a great, the other reasons I don't think are as strong. It's a cultural thing. Well, your dad was 
receive First Holy Communion, so you're going to receive First Holy Communion, so that when Grandma comes in town twice a year, we can all go to Mass and receive Holy Communion, you know, or whatever. We can um, look like a good, you know, Catholic family to make Grandma happy. Right, right. But but at the end of time, the graces that are made available to us and our children in the sacramental life, if we're not good stewards of those graces, we have to be held account for that reality, right? Yep. And so uh, to a degree, it's almost like, well, if the only thing my kid's ever going to do is crash a car because I never taught him how to drive, maybe it's best not to get him his driver's license whatsoever, you know? So now you're getting into a whole different thing, you know, and, and you and I have had debates about this and I've had debates about this with other people is like, you know, even like with regards to with regards to the sacraments, but especially the sacrament of confirmation, um, if if they're not going to um, practice their faith after receiving the sacrament should they get the sacrament, you know, and, and I've had this, like, I've, we've had this debate and I don't even remember what side I'll land on anymore, you know, but the, you know, some people say, no, they, they absolutely need to get confirmed. So they, so that they um, have the opportunity to receive the fullness of the grace that God has in store for them. Right. Other people say, no, they shouldn't because they're, they're blocking themselves from it anyway. They're not even like, they're, they're not disposed to receive that grace. Um, and it cheapens the sacrament so that they're receiving something that doesn't even mean anything to them. So then later on, whatever, you know, so, but I like, I, I, I probably fall into the camp of like, let, let them get confirmed. I actually, I do like, so it, once you start the sacraments of initiation, you need to finish them regardless. You've already committed to, to having them initiated, initiated in the church by having them baptized. You need to finish it. 100%. You know? Um, and if you, if, if, but if you haven't gotten them baptized, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. I mean, you're not going to get them confirmed if they haven't been baptized. Um, but if you have them baptized, finish, finish the sacraments of initiation. So I am, uh, it, it's not a matter of if they're going to receive the sacraments and it's a matter of when they're going to receive the sacraments. So yeah. maybe your kid is a rock star volleyball player. You know, I've got, I've got one in my family and all of a sudden they made the national team and they're going to be traveling every other weekend to different States and it just isn't feasible to prepare them for a sacrament during this season of life. Yep. Guess what? College campus ministries have uh, parishes nearby that you can get them confirmed at. So, okay, sweetheart, we're going to delay your reception of this sacrament because we're focused on volleyball right now. And you you're going to receive it in college. I just wanted, like, it, you said it's not feasible to prepare them for it or it's not feasible for them to make, like, because I'm interested in that because... Yeah, that, that's but, a good like, question. So like, typically, like, the, the, the idea, the, the idea of what you're saying is 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 right. We can finish that idea. You know that if you can't do it right now because of whatever reason, you can do it later. Yes, but but plan on doing it later. Okay, cool. Finish that idea. Yeah. Now, with regards to um, feasibility, feasibility, like it's not feasible. Like we don't have time to do it. And I like, is that true? And so I I do know that there are some parishes. That are like, we are not going to give you materials. You have to come to our class and our class meets on Sundays and you're traveling on Sundays. So you cannot receive the sacrament. I know that there's some situations where that has occurred. Yes, you can do it. There is so much material out there to where a parent could be on the airplane or in between games. Like there is little pieces along the way. You could probably podcast your way to a sacrament. Like yeah. specifically confirmation, it is 15 yeah. pages of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So if you're asking yeah. me as an individual, yes. But do I have that authority? No, I'm not a pastor. And yeah. some pastors want to say, no, you have to do A, B, and C, exactly A, then B, then C. Are and we, if you uh, can't, can't do that, then you got to withdraw. Are we allowed to get ourselves in a little trouble here? <laughs> well, a little, right, uh, little... right now we're averaging about 30 views an episode, so giddy up. <laughs> little, little known secret. Um, the the like. It, I'm, the parish cannot refuse the sacraments to you. So the answer to that is yes, but. So the job of the parish is not to withhold, but to dispense the sacraments. Yep. Or to give out. I don't. I don't you didn't yeah. like the word dispense. dispense um, I mean, yeah, whatever. Confer. Uh, um, but the no. If you if you as a parent form your child, and you can like and and what I would do is if you don't if you can't make those meetings and if I was in that pastor's or in that parish like that. Um, I would um, find a confirmation preparation program, buy it. I would like like go through it. And if there's a workbook, great. Do the workbook. Have your kid do the workbook. Dates of every, every time you did it. Um, like, and then submit that to the pastor and with a letter saying, I'm requesting that my child, you know, be 
given the sacrament of confirmation, here's all the preparation that we have done. Right. If you choose to refuse this, I need it in writing. And, and then, and, and I then if a, they, if they yeah. give it to you, then take it to the diocese. Yep. And then what if the diocese says, nope, we're going to stand behind our priests, which take to a large up. degree. Yeah. And so I have a friend Keep that going. went, I have a friend that went all the way to the Vatican. He yeah. went to Rome with his petition and the Vatican sided with him and his mm -hmm. child was able to, to receive the sacrament. Yeah. And it was, it, it's an awesome homeschool family. There's no doubt in my mind that they were like ready for the sacrament and things like that. But there is, there is something about like some people could do that and say, Hey kid, we just didn't want to force you to go to those classes. So we're just going to sign off on it. I have yeah. seen plagiarized saints essays. I've seen all sorts of like, Oh yeah. 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 All sorts of yeah. stuff that it's just like, if you're going to lie, don't lie for a sacrament. Like this, yeah. this doesn't make sense, yeah. you know? And yeah. so, so I can understand why some pastors and, and leaders would be gun shy about that. But this is where accompanying and being accompanied with that's a relationship well, and, with the parish. And, and I think relational, like having a relationship with your pastor and everything like that is going to get like beyond all of this, you know, and the, the one thing that I, that I don't like, which happens sometimes, you know, is the blanket rule that everyone has to apply to. And there are, there's no exceptions. You know, the thing is, is like, that's this, that's what discernment is, you know, and, and in the, in, even in the RCA process, there are two points of discernment, you know, that, that the church is supposed to do. The church doesn't do it in most cases. They just, well, you did all the steps in the first one, boom, you move to the next one, you know, and that's not like discernment, you know, but the, it's easier just to have a blanket, you know, you know, you didn't check the boxes. No, you can't move forward. And it's like, well, what if like, what if there are extenuating circumstances? Can we have a conversation? Nope. You didn't check the boxes. Right. And I, I, that stuff bugs the crap out of me. I cannot right. stand it. Yeah. Um, because it's not relational. It's not human. Um, it's, but, yeah. but it's a lot easier to scale. And so there is some of those And okay, so let's take a big step back. First of all, <laughs> before you write the Bishop on your pastor, have them to oh. dinner or buy them a beer. Like that's it. Yes. Like you have yes. to be able to journey with your pastor as well and mm -hmm. be known. Um, you should be helping prepare your kids for sacraments either way. Yeah. And I think we're going to have to make that a different episode because we are knee deep in, uh, in, the, <laughs> in, in these details junk. and all this, <laughs> all this stuff. But, but there is a level of advocacy at the parish that, that's needed, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's an important piece. But the, the other thing, and I think this is colossal, is like um, it is not meant to be hostile, right? And so how yeah. can we work together? And sometimes working together means advocating for a higher level because a lot of sacramental prep is done to the lowest common denominator. Yeah. My three-year-old yeah. knows how to do say the Hail Mary. Yeah. But, but my second grader had to learn that. I know because it was one of the pieces in the book that we had to go through. Yeah. And it was just, it blew my mind. I'm like, he's, he's known it for more than half his life at this point. And it's like, no, yeah. you need to teach your kids the Hail Mary. And there were kids in that class, just one, who didn't know the Hail Mary. Yeah. It's just like, okay, so let's walk through this. And and that's yeah. okay. But if the whole class is built around the lowest common denominator, I can appreciate the parents who are like, I don't want my kids to sit there and do things they learned when they were four years old yep. because they, 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 they've been next to me every time I've gone to mass, you know? So oh, yeah. um, th and, that's, and that's a good tension to note. For those of us, you know, in ministry, those of us who live the faith, um, I don't want to say differently, but more, more fully, you know, at home. Um, it is real frustrating, you know, to go to some of these classes because, because it's like, yeah, it, it's not for us. The class is not for us, but we're required to be there. I, yes you know? and no. I, I mean, the only pushback I would give as someone who has led many of those classes, um, kids like yours who are well-formed and take the domestic church element seriously, coming from dynamic, active Catholic families who are really striving to build disciples, it is so helpful to have someone in small group when they're discussing confirmation or someone who's journeying towards the sacrament to be like, yeah, we go to mass like every Sunday and we're, we're on board. Like they are kids that are on mission. Yeah. And so all of a sudden we have to train our kids or prepare our kids. Like you're going to go to these classes and you're not going to go to receive. You're going to go to give. You're going to go to yeah. be a living witness. You're yeah. going to go share, share the yeah, faith. It's a different mindset. And that's it, like, yeah. you, you, I think you do need to get that mindset on if you are, you know, one of, one of those families, like whether you're in ministry or not, like the, the, there are some families that are just like, I mean, I, let's just say it. There's some families that are disciples and disciple makers. And there are a lot of people in our church that are not. 
Right. You know, and so if you're a disciple and a disciple maker, when you go to these things, you are going to have to be on mission. <laughs> you know, that's just it, you know, and that's the way this is. And so it's just a different mindset of you're not going to receive, you're going to give. You're, you're right. going to be on mission. Yeah. Um, and I need to get better at that because I get more frustrated than I do anything else, you know, but. H- have you ever taught one of your kids sacramental classes through the parish or whatever? No. So anytime our kid go through our kids go through first holy communion, we try and have my wife or I be the the catechist. Uh huh. It does it does two things. One, it says to the kids like this is a more special year, so we're going above and beyond to journey yep. with you. Yep. And the second thing is is it elevates the uh, the level of catechesis outside of just follow the book. Yeah. And I think that happens with everyone that volunteers. So there's no volunteers that are like, oh, I'm so excited just to read out of the book, right? Yeah. Um, but there are some that feel inadequate or, or haven't pivoted or kind of innovated in those ways uh, as much before. So I know that a lot of people that come from families like yours um, might be more uh, better equipped to be able to, to yeah. innovate and, and add a little flair. And we want our children to have that extra, that little extra experience. So, yep. Um, yep. so, so that, that's what I would encourage is if you can't um, it, consider partnering with the parish first, instead yeah. of withdrawing from the parish, because they yeah. need not, not just they, not, the, not just the pastor or the DRE, but like the other students that would be your, your son or daughter's classmates, they yeah. need you to be, to, to share that gift as well. Yep. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Our, our situation is a little different because like our kids go to Catholic school. So do they do all of their confirmation prep and all their preparation at the school? Um, and so there's not a class that I can run, you know, for them. Um, but but I just don't, like definitely think that me like offering to help would be would be a good thing and a good sign, you know, because even in some of those, there's some other times when there is an opportunity for someone else to get up there and speak than um, the person that's always up there speaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it, it'd be good to have a variety. So, so I All think right. today's episode turned into <laughs> advocacy. Yeah. If you need yeah. to advocate for your kids to receive sacramental, uh, uh, preparation, sacramental formation, it's not a matter of if, but when they receive those sacraments. So advocate yep. like crazy. Um, if you need to advocate for your kid to uh, sit next to a girl that's sitting by herself, then just go ahead and do that. I mean, it's just advocacy all around. You get some advocacy and you get some advocacy. Um, <laughs> Uh, the uh, most you met Norman. Exactly. <laughs> the most important thing is to partner with the parish uh, before you uh, really, even before you complain to a neighbor, I would really encourage you to, um, to talk to the pastor because Absolutely. The, the pastor is hungry for those conversations. Uh, yes. Vision at parishes, sometimes it, they, they get lonely. They feel like they're the only ones that care. And everyone yeah. else is just like, make sure that mass isn't more than 60 minutes long and we're happy. That's not the type of priesthood I don't think anyone wants to live out. He wants to raise the bar and hearing people dreaming in that direction, yeah. I Pastors think would bless him. And in, in the Aries hearing from a parent, I, I want my child to get confirmed. Our schedule is not great this year. What can we do to, you know, to partner with you guys? And hear my so ideas. And he, yeah, exactly. You know, that's yeah. like, that's a whole different thing rather than, you know, um, I don't know. My kid has soccer. What are you going to do? Like my kid has soccer. How are you going to fix it? You know, that's a whole different, you know, um, different, yeah, I don't know, way to approach things. I had a mom call me. So I was at, at a parish for a number of years and, and she called me and she said, okay, so these are the requirements. I said, yes. She's like, well, are these requirements like required? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, that's why they're requirements. These things. What if my child can't make the retreat? I'm like, that's fine. They just have to make another retreat with a different parish that's confirmation focused. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm wondering about this. I'm wondering about that. And I said, what it sounds to me like you're asking is what's the least you can do for your child to receive this sacrament. Mm. And she said, no, 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 no. I'm not asking that. Um, but it might be helpful if you just shared that answer for me. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. And so I said, uh, what you want to do is you want to sign your kid up for sacramental prep over at this parish over here. That's the mm. path of least resistance. They interpret the diocesan requirements very differently than we interpret the diocesan requirements. And that might be your best bet. Thank you. Goodbye. And that was that. Wow. So in conclusion, don't be that parent. <laughs> you want to dive in, lean in. Sacraments are efficacious. They are effective. They make an impact, which is why even if your kid might not practice the faith when they become an adult, you want them to have that sacramental grace so that it will support yeah. them in doing that. Um so. And I've seen, I've seen multiple times when parents lean in, they learn things, you know, because when, when I went through confirmation, 
Like what the church taught or what my, my church taught is totally different. You know, and it's, I mean, different, you know, it's, it's better now than what it was back then. Yeah. And I'm lear- and I learned things and I learned things about my, about confirmation, what it is about my faith. Parents tell me that all the time. It's like, wow, I'm so glad I went to that class because I didn't know this, you know? So that's, it, it's, it, it doesn't have to be just for them. And, and like, I don't know, it can be actually really good for you too. Amen. So. Amen. Well, great. Right. Let's close with a prayer. Got it. Me or you? You, go for it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. In the name of the Father, <laughs> and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, we love you, and we thank you so much for the gifts of the sacraments, the gift of the church. We also ask that you would bless those that journey with our children um, in formation and preparation for sacraments, especially for our pastors, but also for ourselves and our spouses. Lord, help us to uh, rear these children in the faith that creates a sacramental worldview of missionary disciples that go and transform this world. For we know you desire nothing less. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Father, Holy Son, Spirit. Amen. Spirit. That is our show. Thank you for joining the Catholic Dad Show. God bless. <laughs>